Thank you for joining us again on Beyond the Talking Points. Myself and Josh Jennings, we're hoping to bring information on local issues to you here in Marion County. We thank you for taking a little time out of your day to watch with us and learn with us. Uh, today, we're going to have uh, a couple of the candidates uh, for the upcoming elections. We have Mr. Steve Lamb for Assessor of Property, and we also, later in the show, are going to have uh, Jim Hawk, uh, who is looking to be Road Commissioner. So, uh, let's go ahead and dig right in. Uh, with us, we have Steve Lamb. Um, now, Steve, you currently work in the assessor's office. Is yes, that correct? Yes, sir. I've been, I've been there for four years now. Okay. And just for those of us that, mm -hmm. because it seems to me that it's a fairly thankless job. You got half of the people saying you assessed me too high and half <laughs> the people say you assessed me too low. Is That's that? That's very true. Well, <laughs> yes, but m most people are very understanding about it. It's. Uh, it's, it's a um, very complex process, and uh, our, our goal in the office there is to take care of the people when they come in and answer their questions. Uh, most of the time, a simple explanation can show them, you know, what they're looking at there in case they don't understand it. So um, it's not a thankless job. We, we enjoy it. We get a lot of compliments. We, we help a lot of people, um, both from inside the county, outside the county, a lot of outside calls. Um, people come in with everyday problems, trying to locate property, or uh, maybe a, a, an older relative who's no longer there. They want to find this property. We assist people with things like that. So you. it's it's it is it's not a thankless job. It's a good job. Okay. And just to clarify, uh, you are completely separate of the tax office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's there there there's a sign I think downstairs. Uh, the um, Assessor's office assesses the value on the property. The county commission sets the tax rate, and then the trustee collects the taxes. So we don't set the taxes for you out there in the uh, property. Well, now, a lot of times assessments come down from the state. Is that correct in saying that? Or they well, may adjust assessments a lot of times? Well, How does that work? Okay, well, we just finished reappraisal. That might be what you're thinking about, Josh. Right. Once every six years, we go through... Uh, this process called reappraisal that's where the where the state comes in and works with the county and they look at the sales it's a market driven I process see. and so they look at the sales that you've had in the last uh basically in between the last assessment uh folks focusing primarily on the last couple of years and look for valid sales and there are no foreclosures thing like they look for valid sales and the market drives the eventual price that, that your property is going to be valued at. Um, and it's a mass appraisal. It works across the county. However, uh, say something that's happening in, in Jasper Highlands where there's a lot of sales doesn't necessarily affect somebody, say, in Richard City. No, so it's, okay. it's more localized. The, the, the incident, it, it's more localized so you don't get penalized for that. Uh, and that's the way the process works. But, yes, the state is heavily involved in, and uh, they have uh, value rates built in and I all see. that so if somebody's rate goes up it's not necessarily the fault of the assessor no there you go <laughs> so <laughs> and, uh, you look down. and i tap the table <laughs> and i tap the table now now um like i say it's it's market based driven. it's, it's market driven market -based. now the only other thing that, that that does apply is a lot of people are in green belt and if you have enough property to have in green belt then you don't get billed on the market rates you get billed on what they call a use rate and that's something that's been pretty unpopular this year. Uh, the local office, our office has nothing to do with the Greenbelt use value. That's set by the State Board of Equalization. That did go up this year. Wow. And so some people had actually had property values, market values drop, but, but with the Greenbelt on their farmers mainly. It, it hurts I was going to say, is this mar mainly yeah, agricultural? Yeah, mainly it's agriculture. And it, and it, mm -hmm. and it, it, um, I mean, they're still getting a reduction in their taxes to start with. From a regular tax base for being in this program, but you know they, they saw an increase, and it's uh, it's pretty hard to sit in there and, and tell them 
that we have no control over it, which we had no control. It's controlled by the state board of equalization. Yeah, and so, and, thought, huh. yeah. and so that's that. That's you know, it's, 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 but haven't been happy well, about that. I know mine went down this year, yeah. and yeah, so yeah. a little bit. And I got this letter said if I wasn't happy, I could come. And, right. I, and I thought, man, you think I'm crazy enough to come down there and complain that my tax rate's going you know, well, my taxes they, are going down? If they won't drop the tax rate, I sure hope they drop the assessment. Well, it did a little bit, I think. They, uh, you were one of the few that didn't call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, we, I, I tell you, we have over 20,000 parcels. 20,000. 20,000 parcels in this county. Wow. And basically every parcel... You know, you might own five parcels of land, but every parcel got a notice of a, a change in value. And, yep. and for some of them, it didn't change at all. Yeah. But everybody got them. Um, and again, the way the estate worded them, they were a little hard to read. Uh, and so the first two weeks after those notices went out. Um, He's a busy day at the they, assessor's In fact, <laughs> well, we, I, one day, uh, one of the girls came down from one of the other offices of the courthouse and handed me a note that said, uh, this lady's been calling for two days. She can't get your yeah. phone because it's been so busy, I need you to call her. <laughs> so yeah, and, and you know, once we did that, that's part of the reappraisal process, and once we, we did that, that's called informal hearings. And people were allowed to call and, and, and to make sure we don't ha didn't have mistakes or we didn't have something right. wrong on the bill or just, just to discuss it with them. And a uh, state, couple state representatives came down and spent time with us during that process. Uh, and if somebody's not happy, they can come before, don't y'all have some type of board that we, convenes once a year? We or have something? Board, board of equalization. Board of equalization. And it's, it's an independent board uh, make up, made up of local people. It meets once a year. Right. And that's what we always tell people when we're when we're out in the field talking. Now I've been the field tech for, for four years, so I do the new construction. I do the work out in picking up new housing and and the monitoring process. And and I always tell people that you know if you have a question, come see us. Right. Or if you're not happy, come see us because if you don't follow the timeline for the board equalization, in other words, it's already met for this year. There's nothing right. you can do till next year. Yeah. So we try to give yeah, the public true. as much opportunity as, as we can to know you know when this is coming up. Now something you said, you mentioned that people can call in, and I had heard of course at the board and you yeah. just mentioned the informal well that um, was just for this during the reappraisal year that's, okay that's only so once that every six only years. is available yeah. every six years yeah. when the once the reappraisal was finished they sent a notice out to everybody and said here's your new value this is that once in six okay. year deal and okay. if you want to talk about it call us but now from year to year it's basically up to the taxpayer if they want to come in and, and and uh, if they want to appeal, they need to contact us early so we can yeah, tell them the process. Them. Yeah, because that's only about doing. a week, isn't it? It meets, that for, that board meet, meets, for, meets for two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. I knew it was a short first, time. First two weeks in June every year. But that gives you a good way if you have a, if right. you feel there's a discrepancy, then you've got a voice. Right. It's yeah. just sort of not like, right. oh, here, by the way. Yeah, and, yeah. and again, there was 20,000 parcels out there, and so, yeah. the, you Bunch know, it, it, it is hard to look at everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, it... This may sound a little tacky, and I apologize, but <laughs> it, if so Here much of it, yeah. <laughs> it, if a number of the requisites for how the formulas are done um, is is dictated, for lack of a better word, by the state, it, tell me a little bit about how your experience over the last six years, you know, helps facilitate that, you know. Well, what makes it not a plug and play? You know, well, okay, uh, I can give you. Yeah, well, why, actually, why can't I years. just be assessor tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, like I say, it's a complicated process. There, the the the, um, the rates are set by the state. Mm -hmm. I mean, the square foot value for the housing right. is set. The you know all of those things, but there's a lot of uh, intrinsic parts to that too, like the quality factors and when okay. numbers when you go out to, to compare a house you need to to look at that house compared to the house next to it or i mean uh, two houses side by side can have a different valuation structure <laughs> sure. based on the way they're built and that's that's something that and comes, how they're up kept yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ask well, my neighbor <laughs> but, but but mainly <laughs> mainly mainly the construction right and again that's that's some place that, that i was fortunate and i grew up in a building material business and being in the okay. construction business for a long time you know, when you start looking at quality factors on houses that 
you know, that's some of the local things we can do. And then the other things we look at are uh, property conditions for individual properties. Okay. Uh, so there's, it, it, it sounds real simple when I first started, it sounded real simple. <laughs> But, <laughs> and but since but, then, but since then, it's it's. I mean, there's it, there's an art to it besides of science. And uh, well, there's a lot of information out there too, because I know a lot of times, if um, you know, I may see a house on the market or something, I'll go to Tennessee Property Data. Right. And yeah. it is amazing the information that our assessor's office puts into that system. Right. Because right. that can tell you anything about That's any it. parcel of property, those 20,000 mm -hmm. parcels of property. <laughs> right. And y'all got listed every building, mm -hmm. uh, structure, square footage. It's yeah. amazing the information you can find out on that. Well, the w one thing we do, Josh, is, is now that reappraisal is over, the cycle starts again for the next six years. So rather than just wait around until we mail out tax bills, what we do is we'll start our, our monitoring process. So mm -hmm. for five years, the next five years, we will the field tech will be covering 20% of the county each right. each year. It's about, oh, so about, you just about, take 20%. You take 20% a year and over five. And again, of course, you know the state they have a they have a schedule. It's not you can't yeah. pick and choose. We have a schedule that we start at the top of the county, and work to the bottom, over okay, a five year right. period. And that work has to be completed on a timely process, and that gives us the chance to, to try to put eyes on each parcel. Wow. Now, that's easier said than done out in the woods, obviously. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, when you get to a place like Jasper, South Pittsburgh, where it's dense, you, you can cover some area pretty fast. Yeah. But we try to put eyes on every parcel to see if there's been changes, something added, maybe something taken off. And I found in my travels that I'd find barns gone. I'd find mm -hmm. somebody moving to mobile home and hadn't called us. They were still paying taxes on it. So oh, wow. we, we make those adjustments for the for the for the taxpayers during those years. Now, do we catch everything? No, you know there obviously are that many parcels, and that's sure. why people are allowed to come in the office or yeah. they come in and say, "Well, we've torn a house down or we've done this." But we do that over that five year, and then then the reappraisal starts again. So we're we're busy constantly. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, uh, if you don't mind me adding, I hope I don't talk too much, but. No. But you talk about the information we have out there. The other thing we've done is, is in the last year, in, in May of 2015, the, the state put a new computer system in. We went from a, uh, an old uh, batch-based system that, and I don't know, I was in manufacturing back in the 90s. It looked like something that IBM made <laughs> with those screens, you know, on the old mm -hmm. green computer terminals. <laughs> and we're up to a Windows-based program called Impact now. And you're going to see the amount of information in there really increase because there's a lot more data we can capture. Really? And so the actual amount of information? I think there, there'll be more information on there as, as wow. we get it in the system. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of places that, I mean, th this information, we've would, never collected it. Would it be more up to date, like uh, larger metropolitan areas in the city? I mean, in the state, I notice you go to... Davidson yeah. or Hamilton County, they have a yeah. little more information than we typically have. Well, Is it more yeah, in line it, like it, that? It will be somewhat more in line, but now they have a whole lot more people in Hamilton County. Oh, I and, agree. Yeah. 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 Hamilton County's got 13 people that do hey, the job and, I and do. They and they charge you a lot more taxes, <laughs> yeah. too. Well, so. but they ch don't they yeah. have a paid per view? I mean, you got to pay to oh, look at, the, at some uh, of those not property on, viewers. Not, mm -hmm. on, um, not online. Everything, no, everything, on, everything, everything online should be free. Yeah. I, okay. Uh, they, 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 now, they're going to charge you for tax. I mean, I've been no, there. I, know I got that t-shirt. I, I, I went <laughs> looking know. for property yes. comparison, yes. and I kept bumping into, you know, Knoxville and Nashville and the uh, Metropolitan. It, it kept linking me to their pay site. Could be. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I know going. Hamilton. I've looked at Hamilton. I look a lot at Marion just because that intrigues me. Yeah. You know, you see so much for sale, and mm -hmm. and I always think, well, I'm going to go see what what they got right. that assessed at. Right. Yeah. You know, what, are they really? Is that really worth what they're asking for? And just trying to learn, <laughs> yeah. you know, well, just, more just remember out there, we don't charge. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's free. Yeah. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. It is free yeah, for Marion County. Marion County. Is free. I know free, that. So but that's interesting. Something. So you got a new uh, map? Is it a mapping type system? Well, or? I mean, we had the mapping. We've been on GIS for for several oh, years, but but it's it's a larger database. Oh, it's 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 uh, more efficient in the fact that it updates daily. Where it used to be, where we we put a change in for a customer, we couldn't see it till the next week because oh, wow. it was a batch system. But the new system, hmm. as soon as we change your address or we change at a house or take something off it's live in the system oh, wow. but like I say there's there's a lot of different fields out there for for things like zoning and stuff like that we haven't even had time to even stop and look at wow. yet, that we could probably capture more data and I, I know was you know some 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 of those sites you look at have like congressional districts and stuff like that in there yeah. right. and ours might not actually I don't know what the state has on there yeah, but I've never, seen I, that. I, I, but, I've never delved too deep I, I do a lot yeah. by a lot you know, I know where I'm trying to look, and but I, I look, well, it's a yeah. hey, it's a wealth of information. I yeah. remember one time I'd called the assessor's office, and and Judy Brewer had said, "Go to Tennessee Property Data, mm -hmm. right. and everything right. is there." And man, it's just you can see what someone paid for a house. Right. Uh, you know yep. the history on that mm -hmm. home, that parcel. It's it's a lot. Of, Absolutely, that's a lot of information yeah. to put in. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. hard work. Yep. And I think it only benefits the municipalities to have that information available because as they're looking at in, uh, uh, inviting industry in, right. that's some of the key information right. that they require right. off the front. Yeah. Well, and this information is also very important when they start figuring their budgets for the next year because <laughs> yeah. the accuracy of our work is going to determine, you know, basically the success the of the county. county. Yeah. And it's and, and and I probably didn't realize that when I first started this job. Yeah. But it's, it's so important that we keep accurate data and we keep our data up to date yeah. because when when the mayor comes to us for that rate, so he can take it to the county commission to set it. I mean, they're depending on us to have accurate figures in there. Yeah. So it's a big deal. And I've got an embarrassing question that I just realized I didn't know the answer to. Mm -hmm. Your assessment is. Is that what the municipalities also use it, it, for it all, all we, we generate the information for the county and all the cities. Yes. Okay. Yep. okay. No. So it all feeds back. It all feeds yep. back. So no as, pressure. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for business owners out there, does the assessor's office assess personal property taxes for businesses? Yes. Yes. That's so y'all are state of Tennessee. That's part of you too. That's, that's part of us. Actually, I, I don't know a lot about it, and i tell you why. It's, it's the only part of information in our office that's confidential. In other words, oh. public information, you can come in and look up the, the records on any taxpayer you want to. That's right. public information. But the, the personal property tax is confidential. We have a lady that's been handling it for a number of years. Does oh, I didn't know that. One so just one person she, in that office she, knows she, personal property. She, she, she handles the personal property, oh, and she does a fantastic job with it. And, I mean, it keeps her busy year-round. Oh, I can imagine. And, but, but So I can't, you know, I just know there's a personal property, and, and being in business before I know, you know, and what it's, it's in, entailed with that and, and so forth. <laughs> well, see, I learned something. You know so. you pay taxes. I have paid But that taxes. is good that, uh, you know, personal property is, is, is confidential. Right. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Well, that... Yeah. Now, now that you are going into this with your eyes wide open, uh, whatever possessed you to pursue the... <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, the opportunity came up when Judy decided to retire, and um, I thought that, you know, I've been doing this, and, and I know the job, and I have a great team of people with me. And uh, let's let's do this for the next four years. I'd like to, I mean, we just put this computer system in. I'd like to stay with that thing and get that thing really going. I think that we can, you know, I think with, with my background in it, because I got trained from the ground up in the new system and uh, the other ladies have been on the old system, but, right. but it's more computer based. And so some of the things are a little different in it, but, but it's basically a big database. But no, again, that's the GIS. Well, it's the GIS and the, the, the whole data system. Uh, okay. But, but again, I, I think there's a lot we can do with this over the next four years as we're monitoring. We, we can start accumulating more information. I think we can improve the, the system that we've got. How many people work in the assessor's office now? Let's see. Let me think. One, two, three, four, five, six, counting Judy. So six. Well, there's five, there's five, there's five full-time, one part-time working in the office. Uh -huh. For 20,000 parcels of yeah. property. Yeah. 
And, and if you look so at if you noticed in, in the paper, uh, there was an article in yesterday's paper, I believe it was, in Chattanooga Times, that Hamlin County's got 13 just doing reappraisal. Oh, so, I can believe it. Uh, so See, I, I have been, is it Bennett? Who is assessor in Hamilton? Yes. I think yes. so. He's, yeah. he's retiring, yes. Yes, uh -huh. he is retired. I, I've been at his table. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a, I mean, they've got a whole division of their right. county. Yeah. Well, our, it's our, amazing. Our division is six people, and, and you know, we have to, to do our Well, that's amazing. Plus that take 20, care of the public. That parcels yeah. is managed by most right. few, I mean, just right. keeping everything in line. That's that's a lot of work. That's right. a full time job. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> yeah, come. You come think that is, something. Steve? <laughs> yeah, come, come see us <laughs> sometime. We're not sitting around. Uh, you won't have the time newspaper. to talk to me. <laughs> oh yeah, we always have time you? to talk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we like people to come by, and we have busy seasons and slow times yeah. as far as the public. But you know, that's the first thing we have to do is, is the phone rings, or yeah. if somebody walks in, you're going to stop what you're doing. And, and then pick it back up later on. Yeah. You got to take care so of So early voting is? July 15th. July. Boy, it's on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, it sure is. So uh, the county primary is, is August, August 4th. 4th, and um, the county general is? County general is August 4th. County yeah. general is August 4th. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, county so, general is yeah. August 4th. Okay. So we'll we'll state, the primary. It, That'll be your state primaries. There you go. Okay. Uh, and then November 8th will bring all of your min municipal races. It'll mm -hmm. bring, obviously, the general for your state and federal. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, the president. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. So, so you'll be out before, before we vote for president. You'll it'll know. be over for you, Steve. <laughs> it'll be over for me, yes. Yeah, well, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, Steve, we really appreciate you coming by. I am. I, I learned a lot. I, I, learned. <laughs> I did. I learned a lot. And, uh, you know, it, it sounds like you've hit the ground running and yeah. great, greatly qualified for the job. Well, we wish you. you the best of luck. Well, thank you. That's what we're trying to do. And, uh, and again, I've got a great, great team working with me. And that's, that, that makes, that makes everything. Yeah. That you know, is a good your people, your people make you. And, and then we have the best people in there, in yeah. my opinion. So, so they're going to do the heavy lifting and you're going to take well, the no, credit we, we if all, you win? No. <laughs> no, we all, no, the leader doesn't take the credit. The leader's don't, credit. Don't take that share, bait, Steve. Yeah, take, the leader shares the credit and takes the blame. Yeah, all right, see, go. That's what a good leader go. does. Well, well uh, coming up next, we got Jim Hawk, who's okay. uh, running for road superintendent. And we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Beyond the Talking Points. Uh, again, we are bringing you as many of the candidates as we're able to encourage to come see us. Uh, and now uh, we it's have... It's more like who we can sucker in to come down here. 
Yeah, well, it, it's a little hard to sell it when, uh, you know, you have me on the right and Josh on the left, and they always think that we're coming in to sucker punch them. And, uh, we're pretty nice. We're pretty nice. I mean, we just beat each other. I was going to say, we're not very nice to one another, <laughs> but we're really else. good to our guests. Yeah. But uh, with us now, we do have Mr. Jim Hawk. Uh, he's currently a county commissioner for District 4. Five, four, five, four, five, five. five. I thought I you was five. What seat are you in? Five. Uh, third. Third. Yeah. And uh, he is currently pursuing uh, to be our next road commissioner. And uh, Jim, we appreciate you coming to see us. Glad and, to be here. Uh, just kind of give us the broad strokes, <laughs> a little bit about yourself and okay. what brought you here. And okay, what brought me here, I guess, was few years back, I, well, let me start over. I became in construction most of my life. And we had done a lot of interstate work and stuff. And, you know, I built subdivisions and, 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 and that nature. And it was mostly strictly just paving, excavating, like that. Then I went to work for Signal Mountain. They asked me about if I'd be interested in building a road. So I went with them and we built a road out to the new school at Signal Mountain which we had a job of putting a bridge in too, which was a job. But I guess it was all of that, and I wanted to come back to the farm. I'd been on it for all these years, and, and we run cattle in poultry houses, and I said, well, I'm gonna go back to farming. And uh, we went to doing that, and some of the citizens began to ask me, would I be interested in running for road superintendent? And I said, yeah, I might be, you know. And, so we studied on a little bit and I decided to take it on because I thought, I've got all these years of experience. <laughs> I've been to school through it. I've been through the state and through their schools and yeah. in four or five different plans. And yeah, because not, not anybody can be road commissioner. No, Isn't that no. right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You have yeah. to qualify. But, uh, you, you gotta, gotta have for... some you gotta have some knowledge, knowledge. and know how and, and certifications and <laughs> no <laughs> bowl like me can't run out and be road commissioner because no. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you wouldn't be quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that we have a copy of that show because I'm going to play that <laughs> clip over and over. I'm not qualified to be road commissioner. I don't know about anything else. But sheriff, I couldn't be sheriff or road commissioner. But, uh, I'm sorry, but no, that that just goes to show you got some qualifications out there that a lot of people don't realize you've got to have to be road commissioner. Yeah, I've got I probably in the neighborhood of about 36, 37 years. Wow. Oh, wow. Of being road commissioner. Well, 17 of them was with Signal Mountain Road Commissioner. But I thought, you know, I, I like to use my knowledge and, and see some things. We look at stuff, and, and I guess I look at things some different from others. Uh, and I looked at it, and I said, well, we're going to have to make some major changes. If we don't, we're not going to be set up for the 21st century because we're going to be without the use of some of our roads. Yeah. And if I could put that knowledge, and I know that there's not a great deal of money in this right. for for uh, the road construction work, because you just get a fuel tax, diesel and gas, and you have to use it, but try to use it to the best you can, sure. and make it work, and try to get it all together, and see it as a challenge there, right. because like I said, it's I know it's tough on Neil trying to get it, yeah. but, uh, I just think that I can do a great job at it. So for people like me that don't know, uh, cities are required to take care of their roads. Uh, the county is required to take care of certain roads, and then the state has certain roads. Is yes, that sir. right? Yes, sir. Now, the county does help the cities in some areas. I see. Like if they pay for the material and stuff that way, they will come in and and help them out. They're, they, you, but they're, ultimately, it's the city's bill. Yes. Right. Yeah, it's right. the city to pay. financially responsible. So mm -hmm. if a road's bad in a city, that's not necessarily the the county road commissioner's fault. Yeah. No, sir. Yeah. I see. No, it's not. Would you like to run through the roads that the county does not take care of? <laughs> it's only a 20-minute segment. We don't have time for that. <laughs> I've seen a lot of the roads uh, just over the last say the six months or so or last year too i had so many people that's called me and asked me about it and to check things 
in in the time, of course, we farm and, and we got to have certain times we got to be there. Uh, I've took off and went and looked and met some people and talked to them. And it's just that uh, they just, some of them just need it, you know. Yeah.